Hello, thank you for joining us for Live with Annie, uh, week number 18. I can't believe we're a third of the way through the year already. Time definitely flies. Uh, thank you too to everyone who joined us last week when we celebrated zippers. We shared a lot of tips for making zippers of any length and style and also talked about how to install zippers in your projects. If you missed last week, be sure to check out our YouTube channel or our Facebook page to um, rewatch those. Uh, you'll also find our new Zippers Are Easy video with lots of great info in your digital library at Biani.com. Congrats to Tanya H. for winning last week's giveaway of a Bright's set of 24-inch zippers. Tanya's prize has already been sent to her, and we can't wait to see what she makes with all those fun, colorful zippers. Today we're going to talk about handles and straps. I'll show you some quick and easy ways to make strong and sturdy handles and straps that perfectly coordinate with your projects, and how to add hardware to make an adjustable detachable strap. I'll also show some of the ways we attach handles and straps to a bag for long-lasting wear. Before we start, though, I'm excited to tell you that just this week we added a new 45-minute video to our website. It's called Carry On Handles and Straps, and you'll find it in the public video section of your digital library. We'll walk through the steps of how to get there later in this video. But that video covers everything that I'm showing today and more, and it will have better camera angles, B-roll shots, and actual sewing. And Jake has, Jake has time stamped the chapters so you can watch just the sections you want. So I highly recommend that you make some time to watch that full video and then refer to it anytime you have questions about handles and straps. When I started making bags over 20 years ago, most bags used cotton or polypro strapping for the handles and straps, as we did on this bag. This is our day tripper bag, and we just used cotton strapping to do it. But what I found is even in an area with 10 stores selling fabric and supplies, I often had a hard time finding strapping in colors to match my project. I quickly learned that I could find one inch strapping in several neutral colors, but if I wanted wider strapping and fun colors, I was just out of luck. I knew I could solve the color problem by making straps and handles using fabrics that matched my project, but I needed a way to strengthen and support those handles so they would stand up to wear and tear. So let's start by talking about some of the ways we've developed for making sturdy handles. One really simple method to make a handle involves just a little bit of fusible interfacing and fabric. We use this method for small projects that, will be, that won't be used to carry really heavy items, something like these little project bags. One advantage of this method is that there is no seam on the handle. So depending on whether you're looking at it from the front or the back, how it's folded, it's going to look good from both sides. To make a handle, as we did for these, and these were all made with one inch handles, you begin by cutting a strip of fabric four inches wide and whatever length you want for your particular strap. You're going to cut a, a piece of interfacing the same size and fuse that to the wrong side of the fabric. Then you'll take this to your ironing board. I'm going to get these bags out of the way. You're going to take this to the ironing board, fold it in half with your right sides out, and press it to mark the center. Then you'll bring each of your raw edges into that pressed center crease and press it again. So the first time you did it, you made a two inch piece. The second time you also make a two inch piece, but now your raw edge is on the inside. Then you just fold that in half to make a one inch piece and stitch all the way around the handle, just as I did on this one. For these bags, the project bags, the raw edges are sewn to the edge of the bag. And once the bag is assembled, those raw edges are bound. So we don't even have to do anything to finish the ends. We used a similar technique to create the grab handle that's used on the back top of Back At Ya. We do the very same thing. We press the fabric just as we did before. Let me find my samples here. Okay. 
So we fold the fabric, but we don't have to put any interfacing in this time because this time we're going to use Soft and Stable to stabilize it and make it padded. So fold your fabrics in half and then open it and insert a piece of Soft and Stable right along that center crease. And we cut the Soft and Stable about an eighth of an inch narrower than that one inch piece would be, so about seven eighths inch wide. Then you fold that over, bring that back over, and stitch all the way around. If you want a really padded handle, you could even put a one and seven eighths inch piece in there. So you could put a wider piece and then double fold it and then you'd have an even more padded handle. We used that same technique when we made this little um, catch-all caddy. So the handles, yeah, sorry. They're telling me I've got the wrong name. So yes, this is an in control. Catch-all caddy is bigger. Um, one thing on these though, is that when you make these handles, they aren't sewn to the bag. They're attached to hardware. So they're, they're not going to have the raw edges finished when you finish the bag, so we have to finish them. So to do that, just fold the fabric over on each end before you do the initial folds and you'll have finished ends. To make the handle a little bit narrower in the middle, we fold the middle part of the handle in half and then stitch along the edge. So that makes a really cushioned handle that's really quick and easy to make. I've got lots of pieces here and I'm not positive where I put. We're going to skip the folded handle, the demo, demo on this, but it's included in the video. Um, on these little meshing around bags, we used the folding method to make these drawstring straps. We wanted these to be flexible enough to really easily pull through the casing, so we didn't add any interfacing to the fabric. These start as strips that are two inches wide, and again, you fold them in half and then half again to make a half inch wide piece. That would be a real pain to do because it's so little and you'd end up burning your fingers. So we use a one inch bias tape maker to help with the folding process. And if you watch the video, you're going to see that whole process. Basically, you insert the end of the strap into the opening in the bias tape maker, pull the fabric through, the tool presses them, and or folds them to the center and then you just press them in place and stitch all the way around just as we did before. If you're just joining us, we're talking today about making strong and sturdy handles and straps that perfectly complement your projects. Let's talk now about the method we used most often, and that's making a fabric tube into which we insert polypro strapping. For this method, you need some basic tools. And I'm going to lay all these out and then we'll talk about each of them. So, the basic tools that you're going to need, first of all, is polypro strapping. We use strapping inside the fabric tubes to give stability and strength to the straps. And since it's covered with fabric, the color doesn't really matter, so we only stock it in black and white. We use black when we're using dark fabrics for straps, white for lighter fabrics. Our strapping is available available in both one inch and in one and a half inch sizes and we have it in packages of three yards or six yards or on 50 yard rolls. I have been really 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 thirsty today so you're probably going to see me taking lots of water breaks. In addition to adding strength, the strapping also prevents the hardware from twisting and turning. Let me show you an example of that. So this is a strap that I made by making the fabric tube and putting a D-ring on at the top. And you can see that if I would hook a strap onto this and carry this, it wouldn't take much at all before that piece of hardware would twist and turn 
and my strap would wear out really quickly. By inserting strapping into the fabric tube and having it there, this one is not going to turn. It makes it just a whole lot stronger and sturdier. So some of the tools that you are going to use will make this step really, really simple. And we'll talk about more about each of these as we work through it, but these are tools you're going to want to have handy. First is a pressing bar to use for pressing the seam. I'm currently using a piece of half round molding, but we are in the process of developing a really fabulous tool for this, and we'll share more information as we progress through the development stage. The next one is a turning tool for turning the fabric tubes. And this is our current favorite, which is a quick turn tool, and I'll show you in a minute how to use that. The package comes with three sizes. Basically, the only one we use is the largest one. Next is a bodkin, and this is really helpful for pulling the strapping into the fabric tube. We have tried lots and lots of different methods for this, lots of different bodkins, safety pins, all kinds of things. This is by far the best we've found so far. So we'll talk about that um, again in a minute. And then lastly, um, another tool that I like to have on hand is a hemostat. These are little grippy, they have grippy ends that you can fasten on to your strapping and then they lock so you can use it to pull and push things around. I use it when I need to adjust the placement of the strapping inside the tube. So here are the basic steps. So the first thing you're going to do is cut the fabrics for your handle or strap. If you're doing a one inch strap, you're going to cut a piece that's two and three quarter inch wide. If you're doing a one and a half inch strap, you're going to cut a piece three and three quarter inches wide. And all of our patterns will include all the measurements, so that's not something you need to remember unless you're planning to do something on your own. We lost our camera, so um, we're going to see if we can get that fixed. Last time it reset really quickly. So. Jake said this happened last time, but it it reset. We're done off completely, or I'm still talking. Okay, we're done. We're back. All right. Well, that was quick to fix. Good. I should have had a drink of water while I waited. I'm gonna have one now. So again, the pattern will tell you exactly what size to do. And both of these measurements give just a little bit of wiggle room that makes it easy to pull the strapping into the tube. The length of the strap is going to depend on how long you need the finished piece to be. So for instance, on this piece, this is our um, changing station. And on this one, we want it to put a little wrist strip on. We're done so that we could hook this over our wrist to carry it or um, hook it onto a stroller. So we need just a little short piece for that. On Bow Me Over, we've got a couple different options. So this is a purse pattern that we designed called Bow Me Over and we gave several options for that. So one option was to make long handles that you could wear over the shoulder and you can adjust this depending on your height. The pattern gives a number of options for what length you want to do. Or you could do just short handles if you wanted it to carry it by hand, and then you could have the option of adding a carrying strap. So I've put that in the back pocket here, but I've got an adjustable detachable carrying strap that I can hook onto those two hooks, and then I can carry this bag crossbody if I'd like. We love using crossbody straps on our larger bags, like tra Ultimate Travel Bag, because then you can adjust it for even a tall person and be able to wear this really comfortably. And for those straps, our normal length that we do is around 60 inches. So to do that, um, you're going to need to join a couple pieces. So that's your first step. After you've got your pieces cut, is to join them. And we like to join them with a half inch seam. We press that seam open, and then so we don't have to worry about this fabric um, 
having our strapping get caught on it when we pull our bodkin in, we stitch down along the edges of those. So it's just a matter of stitching an eighth of an inch, or not even that, just right along the edge of the, the raw edge of the seam on each side, and that's going to prevent any lumps and bumps in your seam when you insert the strapping. All right, the next step is to fold that strip in half lengthwise, bring your raw edges together, and stitch all along this edge with an accurate quarter inch seam. And this is a time when accuracy is really important because if you sew a wider seam allowance, your strapping might not fit inside. And I've got a couple samples here to show you. So here's one where I did a wider seam allowance and you can see that my strapping folds over here on the edge. My strap doesn't lay flat and you know that's not going to wear well or look good either. If you make your seam too narrow, and this is I find something that happens a lot with quilters who are used to sewing scant quarter inch seams, then you're going to end up with a strap that's really loose and you're going to have wrinkles in it. So because you want to press the seam open, you really need to have an accurate seam all the way down. So take your time and make sure you press that or stitch that seam really well. So here's one where I've got my seam um, sewn in place and my next step is to press this. If when I started doing this, I would usually try to get my seam centered in the middle and I would, I would press the sides from this side to get that seam open and I would end up with sharp creases pressed on each side. And the problem that happens then is that then when you turn that strap right side out, you have creases in here that are hard to get rid of. So that is the reason why we're in process of developing a little pressing bar to go in here. By using something that's rounded on the top, we can insert that inside our strap. My fingers are not working well today. Bring that down so that we can open it up and then use our iron. I wouldn't use a pressing tool on here, but I'd use my iron to do it. Because the iron sits on top of this curved edge, it doesn't connect with the sides and we don't get sharp creases pressed on each of those. After you have that center seam pressed, then you're ready to turn the tube right side out. And again, we like to use a quick turn tool to make this really easy. So the quick turn tool comes with two parts, a plastic tube and a wooden um, stick that's kind of like a plunger. So the first thing you're going to do is insert your plastic tube into your piece that you want to turn and I like to leave about two to three inches hanging out on the end. I'm going to use this stick to push my fabric through and if I don't have enough down here, I end up with my stick losing contact with the fabric. The stick comes in, out and my fabric is still stuck inside. So leave a generous amount down here and then take your stick so that it connects with the fabric and push it into the tube and you can see it's coming out the other end. I can just pull down on this to pull it off, push up on the stick to get it up, and my tube is turned inside out. So much easier than all the methods that I used to do. That used to be the very worst part of making handles and straps for me was trying to get that tube turned. This makes it super simple and easy. So once you have it turned right side out, then you're going to center your seam in the middle of the back and give it a nice pressing. All right, I've got some samples here. So here we go. So I've got one, my seam centered down the back, and I'm ready to pull some strapping into this. All right, this is where you want to have a little bodkin. And when you um, cut your strapping, your pattern is going to tell you what length to cut it. Normally we cut about an inch less because that way we can let the fabric extend beyond the strapping on each end. This is really helpful if we want to finish the ends because we can turn them under right against the strapping. But even if we're not turning the end, uh, ends under to finish them, we usually prefer to avoid any bulk in the bottom seam. So having the fabric extend beyond the strapping helps reduce the bulk in the seam. And we'll talk more about that later. So I'm going to get my bodkin. This little bodkin has a little alligator clip on this end. You can 
See, it's got little teeth on it that really grab your strapping and hold on to it. And then it has a mechanism that locks down so it doesn't come loose. The other end is pointed and it has a little bit of a, a ridge here so it's easy to, uh, to feel it when it's inside your strap. So we're going to hook it on to the end of our strapping, clamp it down, and then I like to fold the strapping around the end of this so that it will fit a little more easily into my strap. And I just insert the end of the botkin in, get it started, and then it's a simple matter of pushing down on the bodkin, pulling on the fabric, pushing down on the bodkin, and pulling on the fabric to get my strapping inserted into my fabric tube. Feels a little bit tight, but actually that fits really good. So you'd keep going and adjust where you need to, to get it. I'm going to my arms aren't quite long enough to reach all the way across here, so I have to pull it up like this. All right, then you can unclip the bodkin, and now I'm going to need to adjust the placement of my strapping. I've got it all the way to the end here, and it's not far enough to the end on this one. So this is, again, where my hemostats come in handy. I can reach inside my strap, grab a hold of the strapping, lock my hemostats, and give them a pull and get them just where I want them to be. There we go. All right, now, depending on how this strap will be attached, we're either going to leave the ends raw or we're going to turn them under to finish the ends. And let me show you some examples of that. So these are some tabs that I made to attach the handles on our catch-all caddy. And when we make this caddy, those ends get sewn into the bottom of the bag and we bind it. And you've got a fair amount of bulk here because you've got three layers of soft and stable and a fair amount of fabric. So anything you can do to reduce that bulk is going to be good. And again, as we said, the only place you really need the strapping is right here where the hardware is because that's going to add some strength and prevent our hardware from twisting. So it's really important that they're strapping here, but we don't want a lot of bulk here. So when we make these tabs, we let the fabric extend beyond. That looks like three-fourths of an inch or so, and the pattern will tell you exactly how much. So let the fabric extend so that when you attach this to the bag, you've got just that little bit there. So after you get that sewn in place, then you'll put your pocket on around the edges and your piece will be ready to go. But if we were doing a carrying strap, for instance, for our Bonvoy or our Bowl Me Over bag or our Ultimate Travel bag, on that we need to have the ends finished. And I want to show you a couple examples here of how we do that. So I've got a raw edge here. I've already turned this one under. Because this isn't going to be caught in our bag, we need to finish the ends before we stitch all the way around the outside of the strap. So to do this, the first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to trim this just a little bit because it's extending a little bit more than I want. I'm going to take the unseamed side and fold it over, and I'm folding it right against my piece of strapping. That gives me a nice sharp edge to fold against, and this is one reason why you always want to make sure that you've got your strapping trimmed really nice and straight across the ends before you pull it into your straps. So I've got that turned in, and then I'm going to take the back edge and turn it under the same way. And I can use my stiletto to push and pull and get that fabric so that it's really nice and even all the way across and finish that end. Then the last thing that you're going to do is top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around the handle and strap. This gives you a decorative element. It also catches the strapping inside to make it nice and secure. Now let's say we want to make this strap 
adjustable and detachable. To do that, we've got to attach some hardware. And Biani's hardware comes in two sizes, one inch and one and a half inch, and in three colors. So we've got nickel, black, and antique brass in the one and a half inch. Same things in our one inch. So a lot of really pretty colors. And our the one really nice thing about Biani hardware We're back. Our hardware is really beautifully finished. It's not simply die cast and it's not made out of bent wires. So it's got really smooth lines, no rough edges, and a really high quality look and feel. You will really love how it embellishes your bags. All right, let's go through the process to attach hardware to make an adjustable detachable carrying strap. So the first thing you need is some hardware, and you're going to need a one inch wide mouse slider, which is used to adjust the length, and you're going to need two swivel hooks. You'll also need something to attach, that you will attach to the bag that you can clip these swivel hooks onto, and, and that's kind of a separate process. But for that, we like to use either D-rings or triangle rings. We especially like the triangle rings because your hook is right in the center so it always stays right in the middle. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is take the wide mouse slider and you're going to position it with the right side up. It curves a little bit to the top, so if it looks like a frown, you know you've got it right. If it looks like a little bit like a smile, then it's upside down. So make sure it's curving like this. And then take your strap with the seam side up and come into the, there's two holes, come into the first hole and go up over the post and down through the second hole. And usually in our patterns we will have you mark some lines on here so you know exactly where to line this up, but we're just going to eyeball it for this one. So fold it over, making sure you've got your seam sides together, and then you're going to stitch this in place. And we like to stitch with X's to give really good strength and security to these seams. So what I will do when I'm ready to stitch this is I'll mark a line about three-fourths of an inch away because I have a one-inch strap, but I've stitched an eighth of an inch in, uh, from each side. I want a box. So I'm going to put my needle down out here. I'm going to stitch up to the line I've marked, stitch across it, stitch down to here, stitch across, and that created a box. And then I'm going to stitch from this corner to here, go back across this line from this corner to here, and stitch off. That gives me a really secure join, and that's not going to come undone. So now I've got my slider attached, and I'm ready to put my swivel hooks on. So the first thing I'm going to do is with my seam side down, I'm going to go through one of the openings in the swivel hook, and this swivel hook never gets sewn in. This one is free and easy. It moves as you adjust the length of your strap. So that one's going to go in there, but I'm going to, with my seamed sides of my strap together, come back through the opening in the slider, go through there, go back over the post and down through the other opening, and you can see I've got this strap down here now to adjust, and then I bring my other swivel hook, or my other end, into the other swivel hook, fold that over, and stitch it just as I did before. So I've got a really short little adjustable, detachable carrying strap that I can use on a project. If you need more help with that, be sure to check out our free carrying strap and pad pattern. And we also filmed a full add-on video to go with it. You'll find it on our website, byani.com. All you have to do is search, type in the search bar, carrying strap and pad. The pattern and the video will come up. You can add those items to your shopping cart check out paying nothing because they're all free and then you'll find the pattern and video in your digital library and that pattern includes instructions for a one and a half inch strap or a one inch whoops a one inch strap 
and also pads to go on each so you can have a really comfy pad to wear over your shoulder. These would really be perfect for attaching to your tools of the trade bag and we even put a ring on the handles of that so you can clip it on. Alright, let me get some of this cleaned up. So we can make some room here. So as you've seen, it's really easy to make custom handles and straps for your bag. And again, note that any of our patterns that include handles and straps will give you complete instructions for each piece, and it will also give you helpful tags so you can label all the pieces as you cut. This really makes it so much easier when it's time to prepare and attach the components, as you'll know exactly which pieces are used for each and where they go as you assemble the bag. Again, if you're just joining us, we're talking about handles and straps today, and we just covered how to make a variety of straps. Let's talk next about some of the ways we attach handles and straps to our projects. We've developed some really good techniques that will ensure long-lasting wear. So let's look at these two bags. This is our Peacekeeper bag and our Easy Does It bag. And on each of these, the handles are just sewn in place on the outer edges. So you align the raw edges with the outside of the bag here and stitch across it. Here you align the raw edges with the edges of your side strip. The, you will do additional lines of stitching as you assemble the bag, attach the binding, and finish the binding. And all those multiple lines of stitching will really strengthen that seam and the binding will cover all your raw edges and give you a really professional finish. We used a similar method to attach the handle to grab some grub. So we put it on, we aligned the raw edges with the edge of our bag and sewed it in place. In this case, though, the handle is wider than the bag, which causes it to lift up in the middle and makes it really easy to grab. And because we wanted this handle to be really strong and secure, we stitched the handle in place with an X, much as we did when we made the carrying strap, um, to strengthen it. This is a technique that we use a lot when we're attaching straps and handles, so it's one you'll get very familiar with if you make very many Biani patterns. On this running with scissors, we want it to give a little extra stability to the bag. So in addition to the handle that lifts up in the middle, there's another strip underneath, which is a handle stabilizer. And it makes the bag um, not bend when it's full, so it keeps it from um, pooching in the middle and keeps it nice and straight. Now let's take a look at switchback. On this ba handy bag, the straps aren't even sewn to the bag themselves. Instead, they are attached to hardware, which are attached to tabs that are on the top and bottom on the back of the bag. So by letting these just run through those sliders and rectangle rings, you're able to have a strap that's easy to adjust and also that you can carry in a variety of ways. So you can um, use the rectangle rings to adjust the length, and you can use the straps to carry it crossbody or to pull them through the top tabs and carry it as a backpack. So that is a really versatile, fun bag to carry and easy to make with using all the various hardware and tabs. Next, we're going to talk about roll with it. And somewhere here, I know I had another one that I was going to lay out on the table. Room. I have a feeling I left it in the other room, but that's okay. All right, so this is a, a fun new pattern, not new, one we've had out for a while, but a fun pattern called um, roll with it. And just as we did on switchback, 
we attach our handles using rectangle rings and sliders to make adjustable straps. So these handles are not removable like the ones that we showed earlier. These are ad actually attached to the bag. And one advantage of this method is that if your handles wear out, this part can stay attached to the bag and you can take these off and make new handles. So if you've got some extra fabric as you're making bags, it's never a bad idea to reserve some of it so that you can make an extra handle for your bag. The other advantage of this style of handle is that they can fall flat against the side of the bag and get them out of the way. That's similar to what we do on our catch-all caddy so that they can fall and get out of the way. If you're looking for a fun summer project, you're going to want to check out this, this pattern. Um, we designed it originally to put a yoga mat in and take to exercise class, but it's also really great for summertime because you can put towels, flip-flops, swimsuit, and all of that in and take it to the pool or the beach. We've got straps on the inside of here that you can use to hold your towels and mats in place, and they have sliders on them that you can adjust to hold everything nice and secure. We also put mesh and vinyl pockets in so everything's easy to see and you've got some extra ventilation, for instance, if you put a wet swimsuit in there. On the outside, you've got quilted pockets that you can use for your phone and other items that you want to keep safe and secure. This project also demonstrates a technique that is used often in um, in our um, patterns and that is that we use pockets to cover the raw edges on the handles and I'm going to show you that in our take a stand bag so that that process makes a little more sense to you. So on take a stand we did a similar similar technique so here's what take a stand looks like uh, before you attach the sides and get it finished up. So it's one piece of fabric and on that you attach your tabs that have your D-rings for attaching your handle and then you use a pocket that you sew across the bottom and bring up to cover that. By sewing these handle tabs all the way around and with an X, we're distributing the weight of the bag across a great big thing. If you tried to put your handle and sew it only here at the top, it would be really likely that that handle would pull out. By sewing this all the way up and down and doing the X, you've got really strong, sturdy handles that are going to stay in place for a long time. And this is a method that we use a lot on our projects and it really increases the longevity of the bag. So you've got one um, D-ring on each side and then you can attach your strap and you've got it ready to go. This pattern includes two different sizes of bag. This is the small one. There's a larger one inside too and it's going to hold a lot more um, items. I've seen people actually put another strap here or another tab here and here so that they can put straps on each side very similar to this and that gives you a little stronger um, handle if you're going to carry heavier things. So on here we used the pocket to cover the bottom raw edges. I wanted to show you this bag where we do something similar but on here we use a border to cover the raw edges. So we've got our straps covering the raw edges of our pocket and we've got borders covering the raw edges of the strap. All by any patterns will give you complete instructions for how you attach the pieces and what order to put them in so that you're sure to get perfect results. As you can see, there are many, many ways to make and attach handles and straps, and I hope you enjoyed learning how easy it is to make strong and sturdy straps that coordinate beautifully with your projects. And remember that we have a lot of really great resources to help you. So first, we've got our carrying strap and pad pattern that we talked about earlier. Um, and that is available again at our website as a download and a video. We also have our Biani basic series of patterns. So Easy Does It, Peacekeeper, and Call Me all include really good tips for making and attaching handles and straps. And finally, our new video, Carry On Handles and Straps, has all kinds of information about making and attaching handles and straps, 
and include um, sewing so you can see how those actually work. And Trevor is going to walk through the steps with me to help you um, figure out how to find all of those things. So first thing that you want to do is go, um, we're go I'm going to walk you through how to find it in your digital library. So the first thing you're going to do is go to Biani.com and uh, log into your account. If you don't already have one, set one up, but you want to be logged in to make this easiest. Then you're going to scroll down to the bottom left corner of your screen and click on Digital Library. It's in the My Account section, so it's on the right-hand side. Once you are in the Digital Library, you're going to see various sections. At the top, you'll see Recently Purchased Videos. And below that, Recently Purchased Downloads. These sections are where you'll find the add-on video and the pattern for carrying strap and pad if you bought those. Um, note that they may not show up right away. You may need to click on the little button that's at the bottom of each of those sections that says see all purchased videos or see all purchased downloads. And then you'll see the full list of videos and downloads that you have. But way down at the bottom, you're going to see a section called Public Videos. And that's where you'll find this new video, as well as several other helpful videos, like the Zippers Are Easy video that we talked about last week. So be sure to check those out. Um, you can enjoy uh, watching those videos and um, learning all kinds of Biani techniques. All right. Let's go on to a few questions that have come in over the past couple weeks. Um, so we didn't get through all of our questions last week, so we're going to start first with a couple that we missed last week. And one question Denise asked was, where can we get Biani products in Quebec? And that's a really good question, but not one that we can answer very easily. Because we work so much with distributors around the world, we really don't have a good database of stores who purchase our projects, products. Um, so what we suggest is that you contact one of our main Canadian distributors, who is Erie Quilt Art. And Trevor's going to put a link um, in the comments so that you can find their website. But Gail and her team at Erie Quilt Art um, serve customers all around Canada, and they have a Find a Shop button on their website. So that makes it really easy to um, type in where you are and see if there's any stores in your area. So they carry a lot of Biani products. They also manage trunk shows for stores in Canada. So if you are a Canadian store and are interested in a trunk show, contact Gail and her team because we've got a whole bunch of models that live there. And that way we don't have to worry about customs and stuff, sending them back and forth. Another question that Janita and several others asked over the past couple weeks is, what is that that's hanging behind you? And last week, several people said, does that have multicolored zippers on it? So I want to get out of the way a little bit here so Jake can zoom in on this. But this is our pattern called Ruler Wrap. And this particular one is the large one. And we designed this to hold and carry rulers that are up to 24 and a half inches wide, as well as cutting mats that are up to 18 by 24 inches. There's a rod at the top that lets you hang it from hooks on the wall or on the back of a door. And this gives you great visibility of everything that's inside and also easy access to everything. So on the inside, there's a bunch of pockets. They're all made out of mesh. Um, we originally thought about doing them out of vinyl, but this would be a bear with vinyl, so we definitely recommend um, mesh. And you can make them large, as we did on the top, or you can divide them into two smaller ones, and any of those can also be divided into sections. So just as we talked about when we talked about um, a place for everything, lay out what you want to put in there and decide how you want to arrange the pockets and then you know make it according to that. But this does not have to be just for rulers. Petra mentioned last week that she's looking for a way to organize all her zippers. And depending on how many you have, this might be a fun way to organize um, different sizes and colors of zippers. So the pattern includes instructions for wraps in two sizes. Uh, the small one is two pockets shorter, so it would it wouldn't have this and this, so it would be that much shorter, and I'll bring it up. Um, but before I do that, I want it to 
um, answer another question. Several people last week commented about this and asked if we had used multicolored zippers on these. These are actually solid colors and we did um, vary the colors so we did a whole bunch of different colors on that but I think what they noticed was the binding that goes on the top and bottom of the zipper and we used a striped fabric for that and cut it on the bias so it gave us a really fun um, color variation on the top and bottom of those zippers. So um, again solid colors of zippers but the, the variety comes from the binding that's on there. So here is the small wrap. I wanted you to see what it looks like on the outside. Um, and it's got a pocket on the back where you can put keys, rotary cutters, things like that, and then a flap that folds over. But when you open it, it's got two less pockets um, than the large. But when you're ready to go to class, either one of them will fold up like this if all you have in, in it is rulers. If you're carrying a mat in it, your mat fits in the bottom pocket so it's going to fold right here so you'll fold it over on that one you'll have a little bit one extra fold but then you can secure it this way so if you have a mat in here it's going to make this really strong and sturdy and you can carry it that way so that is ruler wrap and it comes in two sizes Again, last week we talked about zippers and it was really fun to read all the comments from people who enjoyed learning how easy it is to make zippers of various lengths and style. Um, I showed the advantages of attaching zipper pulls to zippers by the yard. I also showed how to attach a zipper pull to cut tape. And the real secret on that is to separate the tape and put the zipper slide on from the rounded end. So I've got one here. I was just going to show that to you again really quickly. Um, I've got several questions that people asked. All right, so if you've got your piece of tape, um, there were several questions about it, so I just wanted to show it one more time. So again, if you're going straight on to cut tape, you want to go on from the rounded end. So pull your tape apart, and then you're going to take the rounded end of the pull, which has two channels. You're going to take the left side of the tape into the left channel. You're going to take the right side of the tape into the right channel, and you're only going to go about halfway in and give it a little tap. Well, the one thing that I forgot to mention, and Joanne clarified it, is that once you do that and tap on it, you're going to either hear or feel a click. So that's the key to know that you've got it on right. And once it clicks, then it's really easy to just pull down and your zipper's ready to go. So listen or feel for that click as you tap it in place. Jennifer asked, is it possible to attach the flat end of a zipper pull to the cut tape? And the one thing I've learned is not to say you can't do something because there's always someone who's going to prove me wrong. But I'm just going to say it's possible, but it's not easy. So if you're working with cut tape, again, we recommend going on from the rounded end. Uh, you can pull it on from the flat end if you're working with an uncut end of zippers by the yard. Um, and in that case, don't separate the teeth just or the tape. Just slide on the pull until it touches the teeth and pull on each side of the zipper tape. So if you need a review on that, either watch last week's Facebook Live or go to your digital library and watch our zippers, our easy videos. June also shared a good tip. I had talked about once you get your slides on to sew across the ends so that your slides don't come off. She said she just uses a staple. So she staples each end to secure the ends, and that's a really quick and easy idea. And especially since you're using zippers longer than you need and you're just going to cut those off, it's not going to matter at all. Jean asked a really great question. How do you tell what size a zipper is? She said, I have a bag of pulls from another company and they seem too big for your zipper tape. And Connie said, I have a bag of zipper pulls from Atkinson Designs. It doesn't say what size they are. Will they work with your zippers? And again, that was something I forgot to mention last week, so I wanted to um, go through that again. So all by Annie zippers are number 4.5 zippers. 
Atkinson Design zippers are number three zippers, so they're basically the size of a dress zipper. Most of the other handbag zippers that are on the market are number five, and I wanted to show you something fun. This is a number 10 zipper. So what you're going to notice as you look at these is as the size of the zipper increases, the size of the zipper teeth increases, the size of the zipper tape increases, and the size of a zipper pull increases. So when they call something a number 4.5 zipper, that measurement um, refers to the width of the zipper teeth on a closed zipper. So if you measured across here, it would be approximately 4.5 millimeters. On this zipper, it would be approximately three. On this one, it would be approximately 10. As you can see, the slide has to match the width of the teeth. So you cannot interchange slides across sizes. So the bottom line is, if you're using a number 4.5 zipper, you need to use a number 4.5 pull. And I think we have one last question, and that came from Olivia, and she wanted to know, are the colors consistent across the zippers and mesh? And yes, absolutely they are. So we have 14 colors of mesh. We have 14 colors of fold over elastic, and both of those match each other and also match our 14 best-selling colors of zippers. So they're all going to match beautifully. I have to confess, we rarely use the same color for all three. There's so many colors to pick from, um, so we like to mix things up. But if you want to, for instance, use your apple green mesh with your apple green zipper. Let's see if I have my little ring. You're also going to find that your apple green fold over matches it perfectly. So have fun picking zipper colors, have fun making handles and straps, and to thank you for joining us today, we've got a little giveaway that we're going to do. Um, we are, are going to give two lucky um, viewers a little pattern pack, so you're going to get our new carrying strap and pad pattern. We're also going to do a package of strapping. One's going to get one and a half inch strapping, One's going to get one inch strapping, and then we're going to put in the hardware um, to make the strap and also to attach it to the bag. So we'll include the triangle rings, the sliders, the swivel hooks, and is that it? Yeah, slider, D-rings, and swivel hooks. And so with the, with the one and a half inch, we'll put one and a half inch hardware, one inch with the one inch strapping. So when Trevor contacts you to let you know that you won and ask him for your address, um, you can let us know if you want black or white strapping and also which color of hardware you want, whether you want antique brass, black or nickel. So here's what you have to do to win. And don't forget you have to do this on Facebook. It doesn't work on YouTube. The first thing you do is leave us a comment. Uh, tell us something you might have learned today. What color of hardware is your favorite? Uh, do you have some ideas for new patterns we should make? Or tips to share? So whatever you want to comment about, we love to read your comments. The second thing we want you to do is tag a friend because we really want to spread the word about our Facebook Lives. Um, so please share it with someone who, you, would, who think you think would enjoy our weekly presentations. And to tag, if you aren't familiar with that, all you have to do is type the at symbol and follow it by their Facebook name. Their picture and name will um, pop up so you can make sure you've got the right person. Click on that, it adds it to your comment, and then add your comment in and submit it. Um, we will pick winners from all the comments made by Midnight Mountain Time tonight. So you've got about nine more hours to watch and um, put in your comments. So again, thank you so much for joining us. We love spending time with you each week. week. And we will look forward to seeing you again next week when our topic will be beautiful bindings. So I know a lot of people really struggle with bindings and we've got some really good tips to share. So hope you will join us then.